Instant ID for Automatic 1111 is here and it is amazing. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to set everything up and how to get it running with the right settings as fast as possible. Also fair warning, this is using the inside face technology, so you can't use this in a commercial way. Let's get started. Here you can see the initial image that I'm using and some amazing different style results using this face. The amazing thing about that is that it sticks to the face and is independent of the style, very different from IP adapter, which could also do a face but would stick to the style at the same time. This gives us a lot more freedom. So the first thing you need to do is to go inside of Automatic 1111 to your Extensions tab and then click here on Check for Updates. The most important thing here is to update the Control Net extension. You click here on Apply and Restart and this will download everything for you that needs to be updated. You might have an error message at that point, which means close the CMD or command line window for automatic 1111 and simply start it again. This should resolve the problem. Then when we go back here to our text to image, when you scroll down to control net, in this case, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because we need to use two control nets at the same time. Now down here, you can select the preprocessor and of course also the model. So in the first control net, it is really important that you select the instant ID face embedding and then for the model, select IP adapter instant ID SDXL. In the second control net, what you want to do is to select the instant ID face key points and then for the model, the control instant ID SDXL. Yes, this is only for SDXL at the moment. However, you also need both of these models. For this, you want to go to the GitHub page. I have linked below the video here the project is described you want to scroll down a little bit and you can see here there is two links for download when you click on them they will directly start the download however the files have the wrong name so for the first link you need to use the first name given here for the second link you need to use the second name given here this is important so that ControlNet actually understands these models and can use them in the right way this has to go, as it says here, into your automatic 1111 folder, in there into the models folder, in there into the control net folder. After you have downloaded this, you want to click here on the refresh button to actually load these models or start automatic 1111 altogether again new. Now, the first time you're going to use this, this is going to download the preprocessor models for you. So it's going to take a little bit time because it's about like two, 300 megabytes an additional download. Now let's talk about the image we need for this. The face should be clearly visible. It should not be cut off or overlaid by anything in the picture so you can actually see the face well. And I would also suggest to have a rather high resolution image with nice details in there, but you can also try a lower resolution. I set mine to a one by one crop with 2000 pixels on each side, probably too large, but at least I get some good quality from that. Load the image into both the first and the second control net. And then on the GitHub page, it actually says down here 512 for the preprocessor resolution. I set mine to 1024. I didn't get any negative effects from that. And it also didn't take longer. And it is the resolution for SDXL. So I don't see anything negative about that. For the rendering. I would suggest to you, if the, you want to experiment with this and have the images render faster, to use a Torbo model for SDXL that is rendering faster. I suggest to use the Turbo Diffusion XL Turbo model. This renders very nice styles in very few steps and gives you a faster render time so that you can experiment more with the model. So download that into your models folder into the stable diffusion folder. It's as you can see here 6.62 gigabytes and of course it's going to be an 
SDXL model. Load that inside of automatic 1111. Set the VAE to automatic. If you don't have this setting, it is already at automatic. Write your prompt and of course your negative prompt. I kept it pretty precise and short here. First of all, because it is easier to apply style to the image, but secondly, also because SDXL doesn't need super long prompts anymore. It understands what you want to create. Now for the settings, because we are working here with a turbo model, I'm going with the DPM++ SDE Keras sampler. I'm only using eight steps, which saves you a lot of time. And then for the CFG scale, I'm using a lower CFG scale, which is also suggested by the GitHub page for instant ID of only four. You can see here for the result, working pretty well with the anime style of this image. Now let's talk about the control net settings because there might be a head scratcher for you. If you don't adjust anything at all, you might always get a photo image and not have the style applied. So what I would suggest to you is to both in the first and second control net set the control weight to 0.5. Play around with the control weight, but 0.5 I found is a good balance between giving enough freedom for the style, but also also having enough precision for the face. Another thing you want to play around with is the end control step. This means the last step that the control net is applied. You can play around with this in the first or the second control net or in both control nets and just see what kind of results you get from that. So let me know in the comments what you think. Follow me on Twitter for daily AI news updates. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah. <laughs>